Have you ever played a first person shooter at the maximum difficulty level? That's kind of like programming Vulkan without the validation layers. And while in a video game the motivation is simply to make it more challenging, in the case of Vulkan you should utilize every tool available to find bugs faster. By default the validation layers print a message to the console window. This may be enough, but we can do better by creating a debug callback function to receive notifications from the Vulkan driver whenever an event that we are interested in occurs. This function will provide more information than the console window and we can also place a breakpoint inside it and investigate the function stack that led to it. Alright, so we are in tutorial number 3 and today we're actually not going to be making any changes on the application side so we can simply rename the project to tutorial 2 and 3. All of the changes will be in the Vulkan Core library which holds most of the setup code. So quick recap, we have our very bare bones application class, which right now simply holds an instance of the Vulkan Core class. This class is of course defined in the Vulkan Core library, and you can see that I've added a private function called create debug callback. To actually create the debug callback, we will need to create something which Vulkan calls debug utils messenger. So we have a handle for that. And as you can see by the ext suffix, it is defined in an extension rather than the core of Vulkan. Another minor thing to note here is that both the instance and the debug messenger are initialized to VK null handle instead of the regular null as in the previous video. This is a bit cleaner because this guy is defined by Vulkan itself. As you can see there is some complex logic here so depending on various conditions you may end up using either null PTR or zero or whatever. So yeah, this is a bit cleaner to use that. Okay, so create debug callback is called from the init function of Vulkan core after we create the instance, of course. Pretty much anything in Vulkan requires an instance, so it has to be first. Before we go to this function, what we need to understand about the debug callback is that it requires a combination of the validation layer as well as an extension called debug utils. As you can see, this macro is defined to be vkext debug utils. This is an extension, so it's not part of the core Vulkan. Now, in the previous video, I've also added debug report, which has a similar functionality to debug utils, but it is actually deprecated and was superseded by debug utils, so we can get rid of that. In a production application, you may want to enumerate the extensions before you decide what you want to enable. In this case, I'm going to assume that debug utils is available because it is so common. To make sure that it is available on your machine, you can run the Vulkan configurator. And if you can't find this guy from the search bar, you can simply go to the Vulkan SDK folder to bin, and it's called vkconfig. You can see here that the validation layer is available. And to find out about the extensions, go to Tools, Vulkan Info, and then under Instance Extensions, you can see that we have Debug Utils and a bunch of other stuff. So we can now go down to Create Debug Callback. As usual, we need the Create Info structure. In this case, it's called Debug Utils Messenger Create Info. This will create our Messenger object. There's a type for that, as usual. And then we need to set up the severity and the type of the message that we are interested in. There are several levels of severity. As you can see, we have info as well as verbose, which gives out even more information. And then we have warning and error. Okay, so this is pretty self-explanatory. All of these are different bits in an integer. So we can simply combine them together to get the severity that we're interested in. In addition to that, we have a message type. So we have general, validation, performance, as well as device address binding. So in this case, I'm just going to get general, validation, and performance. The next attribute is very important. This is a pointer to the debug callback function. As you can see, the Vulkan SDK defines a type def for this function pointer. So the debug callback function will receive the severity, the type, as well as additional information 
in this big structure right here. I'm not going to go over everything here, except the last two elements, which we will see in a second. The last attribute is a pointer to a user data. This is a void pointer, so you can put anything that you want here, such as the address of your main application object or whatever. Anything that you find useful, anything that you want to receive in your callback function. Right now, I'm not using it. In order to actually create the debug messenger object, we need to call create debug utils messenger. But since this function is part of an extension, as we saw, it is not readily available like the create instance function, which is part of the core Vulkan. So what we need to do is to get the address of this function by calling get instance proc address. We have to prepare a function pointer for that. And Vulkan provides us with the type def of this function. And to get the address of the function, we provide the instance handle and the name of the function. Make sure to put this correctly, including the suffix. We can now create our debug messenger. This function takes the instance, the create info structure, null for the allocator, and the address of the attribute, of the private attribute of the class for the debug messenger. The debug callback function itself is defined up here. Notice that this is a simple C function. It's not part of the Vulkan core class. And what I'm doing here is simply to print the debug message, which is available from the callback data structure. And I have a couple of helper functions to translate the severity and the type codes to the corresponding string. Very simple. The severity is here and the type is here. As you can see, this is a very simple switch case. The message may be specific to some Vulkan objects, so we can traverse the P objects array by going over in a for loop over the object count attribute, and then we can print the object handles. This function returns a Boolean flag, which indicates whether the calling function should or should not be aborted. Right now, I'm always returning false here. In a more complex application, there may be some cases where you want to abort the function flow. Remember that the debug messenger handle must be destroyed at some point. So in the destructor, we call destroy debug utils messenger. Now, same as in the create case, we have to get the address of this function. Okay, so it's the same thing. Okay, so if we run this like that, while the window is open, we can see that the Vulkan instance was created and then the debug utils messenger. If we now press escape on the window, we can see the destruction in reverse. First the debug callback and then the Vulkan instance. Now let's say that we forget to destroy the debug messenger. Let's go to the callback function and place a breakpoint there. And now if we run this in the debugger, and we close the window, we can see that the callback function was called and we can see the entire stack down here. So in addition to all the information that we're getting here, the call stack may also provide some valuable information about what went wrong. Right guys, I hope this was very simple for you. In the next video, we will take a look at surfaces and physical devices. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.